Come on. I got you an early Christmas present for being such a good boyfriend. A good boyfriend present? Those are the best kind. Let's see what... Really? Reveal it! Alright, fine. Yee! What's up gamers? Dreamcast Guy here, and today I guess I'm checking out Pokemon Let's Go. Now, in the past, I have specifically said that I wasn't going to buy these games, review these games, or even play them, because as a diehard Pokemon fan, it just didn't seem like what I personally wanted, but... I think part of being an adult is realizing that you may have made a mistake. So today, I'm going to be doing a review a little bit later than everybody else did and trying to answer the question of, was I wrong about Pokemon Let's Go? In order to properly talk about this game, we need to start off by taking a short trip to the past and looking at the origins of Pokemon. These games first started coming out back in 1996, meaning that they have existed for over two decades. And in those 20 years, we've seen all sorts of great sequels and spin-offs and everything in between. But let's go, this is something else entirely. They feel like they're trying to be remasters, but simultaneously sort of reinvent the core aspects of how Pokemon looks and plays. Here in America, the first games we got in the Pokemon Saga were Red and Blue, and shortly thereafter, Pokemon Yellow. Now, Pokemon Yellow was very different because, in my opinion, it was the first game to be very character-focused. We got to really be Ash and see his connection to his main Pokemon, Pikachu. We got to see him try and take down Team Rocket and go on all sorts of quirky adventures, while, of course, trying to collect and train every single Pokemon he encountered. The reason I mention that is because Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu are actually remakes of Pokemon Yellow and not so much Red and Blue. Now, my biggest fear when going into these games was that it would just be too straight of a remake, having every line, every beat, and every mechanic be almost exactly the same and therefore be boring, whereas I can actually say that that is not at all the case. Let's Go is a very, very different game, and in many Anyways, it pays a lot of cool tributes to fans by switching up big story beats and having all sorts of great new music. But the biggest difference here in this remake is how we play it. This is probably going to be the part that's the most controversial, but let's dig into the capture mechanic. Now, obviously, in previous Pokemon games, everything was based around random battles. You'd go into deep grass or swim around in the water, and Pokemon would just appear on screen. And once they were there, you would have to weaken them in combat until they were just slow enough and close enough to death that you could throw a Pokeball and capture them. Then, once they're part of your team, you're able to grind, level them up, and use them in battle against other Pokemon. Now, this has all kind of been streamlined into one big thing. Essentially how it works is that while you're exploring in the environment, you'll just see Pokemon hanging out, having a great time, and you can walk up and challenge them. And the second you do, instead of actually fighting them, you just throw Pokeballs at them over and over again until you catch them. There are other little mechanics to it, like some Pokemon will move around the screen so you actually have to target them properly, or some Pokemon will run away faster, so you need to actually get fruit that you can feed them that'll make them stand there a couple extra seconds, giving you a chance to properly capture them. Now, while they're on the screen, I bet you notice that there is a circle inside of this circle that's slowly shrinking. And essentially, this is just trying to basically be your target reticle. The closer you get to nailing the center of the circle as it's getting smaller, increases your catch rate. It's something that's not particularly hard, but it certainly takes practice because all of this is done with motion controls. When you're playing this in docked mode on your screen, you are going to be physically having to time your hand motions. And it can be a little bit weird, especially if it's a Pokemon that's moving around a lot or if you have any real life distractions. It's not necessarily bad, but it feels a little bit strange sometimes when I encounter a Pokemon, it's very, very rare, I finally freaking 
found it and I'm super happy and then I'm trying to worry about perfectly using my hand motions like I'm throwing a fastball in baseball. It's here that I actually prefer using it in handheld. So when you take your Switch off of the dock, it completely reinvents the capture mechanic to instead make it where all you have to do is aim the left joystick and tap A to throw it. It makes it almost like a pokey first person shooter. Now in this game, this is all very, very mandatory. In other Pokemon games, you could just catch the Pokemon you liked, level them up extremely well, and then never bother catching anything else. Whereas in this, you absolutely need to capture Pokemon even if you plan on never ever using them, since there is now experience points for catching stuff, and it is enormous. Now let me make this very clear, you could probably beat this game with doing almost no battles ever except for mandatory boss fights. You get such an enormous amount of experience points for just catching stuff, especially if you're catching the same Pokemon over and over in a row and building up a catch multiplier, you could hit max level very, very simply without ever actually getting into fights. It's a little bit of a peculiar change, and I kind of guess my problem is that I wish we got more experience points from fights themselves. I love battling Pokemon. It's so cool to try and worry about getting the correct elemental types and beating up my foes, so the fact that the entire emphasis is just on catching is a little bit strange. But let's talk a little bit more about the combat itself, because it's in this way that I think they've made a lot of really cool choices. So originally, a lot of the moves we had back in 1996 were pretty limited. I mean, obviously the Pokemon games, for as advanced as they were, were still a product of their time period. So in this remake, they have greatly expanded the total move set. There is actually different techniques that are available from all the different generations, all combined together, even though there's only Pokemon from Gen 1. It's here when you start leveling up your Pokemon and trying to learn new skills and master all the different techniques that you begin to notice that they have made another giant change to the game here, which is how TMs work. So you used to basically find these different things that I'm going to call magic spells, and they were basically like scrolls that would let you use once to teach somebody a very strong talent, like Fire Blast or Headbutt, and by teaching these to them, that Pokemon and that Pokemon alone Alone knew this super powerful skill, and the team itself, the scroll in this analogy, would disintegrate. So you really had to use it on a Pokemon that you planned on keeping it around. Whereas now, you can use every skill you learn as many times as you want, which means that when you get a good TM, you can just spam it. I mean, I basically taught every single Pokemon I could every single strong talent point. And here's another weird thing, there are no longer HMs. There used to be basically TMs to teach your Pokemon skills and HMs which were used to teach them techniques, and now that's not in the game at all. Instead, you don't have to teach a Pokemon to cut down bushes, your character himself just learns to karate chop bushes. You can really tell that this game was made for children, and I don't mean that in an insulting way, but this is something that they tried to make everything super super easy and ultra ultra simplified. But there is some added difficulty if you want it. Now one of the things they've added in that I actually extremely like is the coach trainers. So as you're wandering around the world, you're of course going to get into all sorts of random fights. Pokemon trainers just really enjoy beating the crap out of each other. So now as you're walking along, there will be the people who normally challenge you, but there will also be people that are just out and about in the environment that you can challenge whenever you want. They are optional and are basically like mini bosses who have way powered up talents, way powered up skills, and will very likely kick your butt. And I like this because it makes it where if you're somebody like me who's been grinding a bunch and trying to level up all he can, it's nice to have this really cool challenge in between the major gym battles. Because the goal is still the same. You still need to try and get the eight badges and go challenge the Elite Four, but this is some nice like bite-sized fights in between to motivate you to keep grinding and getting yourself as strong as humanly possible. These alterations to the combat and pacing are something that really, really make it where the game feels 
feels much, much tighter overall, but it ends up making the thing very, very short. I mean, start to finish, I completely beat Pokemon Let's Go Eevee in about 16 hours. Now, keep in mind, I've beaten Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow about 80 times, and that's no exaggeration, so I knew exactly where to go every single time, but part of that is also the fact that you now get a lot of help out in the environment. Like, one of the weird things is, in the older games, your rival was somebody who was a complete jerk. From the very beginning of the game, there's a character who follows you around and keeps trying to challenge you to fights and kind of rubs it in your face that he's always a little bit stronger, but in this, he's kind of just a bro. I mean, he comes up and he pokes fun at you a little bit, but he also gives you items and occasionally will teleport you to the next objective. Like, straight up, there were times where I didn't know where to go because I could wasn't used to the new map, and all of a sudden he would just show up and be like, hey man, oh, are you trying to find the Diglett Tunnel? Well, Boof! Look at that! I snap my fingers and there you are. It makes it where the entire game is much more friendly, and I guess that's not something I'm particularly a fan of. I liked the jerky rival. I like that challenge. I like that real grittiness to it, where it felt like in order to try and be a Pokemon master, I needed to be tough, both emotionally and physically, and of course with my Pokemon. I guess what I'm really saying here is that Pokemon Let's Go is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. This game makes a lot of big efforts. It's really cool to see that they managed to reinvent this game so completely. I mean, this is a new game from the ground up. They changed cutscenes, they added in more Team Rocket encounters, they put in so much extra writing and cool new songs that I was completely blown away by just how good it is. But it's still not quite what I wanted. It does make me very excited now for the next generation of Pokemon, because if it can be this good, or even better, I am completely down for it. But what do you guys think of this? Have you actually played Pokemon Let's Go? And if you have, what do you think of it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Babe, wake up. Uh, wake what? up. What? I got you an early birth Christmas present. <laughs> 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 Happy birthday. I'm putting that here in the video. <laughs> it's my birthday, not yours. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.